hi everyone welcome back in today's video i'm going to show you how to build a simple authentication system using ask.net core web api with identity we'll create apis for registration login and password changes and we'll test everything using swagger let's get started by opening visual studio and creating a new web api project Once the project is created, we open the NuGet package manager and install the required libraries for Entity Framework Core, ASP.NET Core Identity and Swagger so we can easily test our APIs. After installing the packages, we open the appsettings.json file. Here, we add a new connection string. This connection string tells our application how to connect to the SQL Server database, including the server name, database name, and authentication details. We also need to create a SQL Server database. This database will be used by ASP.NET Core Identity to store all user-related data, such as users, roles, password hashes, and login information. Now, we create a new folder called Entities. Inside this folder, we add a class named Application User. This class inherits from Identity User. By doing this, we can extend the default Identity User and store additional information such as the user's full name, Let's create another folder called data. Inside this folder, add a class named application db context. This class inherits from identity db context. It acts as the main database context and is responsible for managing all identity related tables in the database. Now let's open the program.cs file. Here we read the connection string and configure entity framework core. We also add data protection and configure ASP.NET Core identity. These settings define password rules and enable features such as password reset and email confirmation. To test our APIs, we enable Swagger, and in development mode, we also enable Swagger UI.
Next, let's open the Package Manager console. Then, we run the Migration command to apply our changes and create all identity-related tables. After the process finishes, you'll see multiple identity tables created in your database. Now let's create a new folder called models. Inside this folder we add a class named login model. This model is used to receive login information when a user signs in. We then create a class called register model. This model is used when a new user registers an account. Finally, we create a class named change password model. This model is used when a user wants to change their password. Next, we create a new controller named account controller inside the controllers folder. This controller is responsible for handling user authentication, including registration, login, and password changes. First, we inject user manager and sign-in manager into the controller. These services allow us to manage users and handle the login process using ASP.NET Core Identity. The register API is responsible for handling user registration. It accepts a register model from the request body. First, we check whether the model state is valid. If the data is invalid, we return a bad request with validation errors. If the model is valid, we create a new application user using the email and full name provided by the client. We then use the user manager to create the user and securely store the password. If the operation succeeds, we return a success response. Otherwise, we return the errors provided by ASP.NET Core Identity. The login API is responsible for handling user authentication. It accepts a login model from the request body. First, we check whether the model state is valid. If the data is invalid, we return a bad request with validation errors. If the input is valid, we use the sign-in manager to verify the user's email and password. The password sign in async method checks the provided credentials against the stored identity data. If the login is successful, we return a success response. Otherwise, we return an unauthorized response. The change password API is responsible for updating a user's password. It accepts a change password model from the request body. First, we check whether the model state is valid. If the data is invalid, we return a bad request with validation errors. Next, we find the user by email using the user manager. If the user does not exist, we return a not found response. If the user is found, we call change password async to verify the current password and update it with the new one. If the operation fails, we return the errors provided by ASP.NET Core Identity. If the password is updated successfully, we return a success response. Now run the application and open the Swagger UI at slash Swagger. 
First we try calling the register API. At this point it looks like something isn't working as expected. To fix this error, let's open the application DB context again. We need to update identity DB context so that it uses application user as its generic type. After that, run the migration command again to update the database schema. Once the migration completes, try calling the register API again. You can see that the user is created successfully. Next, we test the login API using the account we just created. Here, we encounter a different error. The reason is that the authentication middleware has not been configured. To resolve this, let's return to the program class and update the authentication settings. Here, we configure authentication using ASP.NET Core Identity with cookie-based authentication. We register the identity application scheme and enable cookies to handle user sign-in. We also customize the authentication events. Instead of redirecting to a login page, the API returns proper HTTP status codes a 401 status code is returned when the user is not authenticated. A 403 status code is returned when the user is authenticated but does not have permission. Finally, don't forget to enable the authentication middleware. This configuration is required so ASP.NET Core Identity knows how to handle sign-in requests. Now we test the login API again in Swagger. Everything works as expected and the login is successful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.